This video is an updated version of the crucible making segment I showed you in the microwave metal melting video. If you haven't seen that video, you might want to watch it first. We'll need some silicon carbide. You can use a fine grit, a medium grit, or in this case I mix some coarse with fine grit silicon carbide. We'll weight it and add between 8 and 10% of sodium silicate, also known as water glass. You can also add less, but 8% is a good starting point. Then we'll mix it properly. We'll fill the glass step by step, pressing the silicon carbide as good as you can. For pressing it down you can use different tools, it can be a wooden stick, something you found in a kitchen or in my case a 3D printed tool. Next we'll remove the material from the center. You can keep shaping the crucible once the sodium silicate is cured. In other words, you don't have to carve it out perfectly. We'll put it in a microwave on top of a ceramic fiber sheet and we'll microwave it until the glass cracks. If the glass doesn't crack, you can use an ice cube to help it out. But don't overdo it, otherwise it will crack into million pieces and it will be more difficult to remove it from the crucible. We'll carefully remove the glass. And then you can use different kinds of sanding tools to keep shaping your crucible. The battery died, so I guess that's it. I'll use a pile and a sandpaper. Next we'll heat it up in the metal melting chamber. Even if you're not planning to harden your crucible, you will want to heat it up before using it for the first time. So our crucible is ready and we can start using it. But not so fast. There's one more thing that I recommend you to do. Depending on the crucible and your needs, you might want to harden it. Hardening the crucible will make it much stronger and there will be less chances that it could crack. But do you need to harden your crucibles? Well, that depends on the shape, thickness, height and as well on the ways you're planning to use your crucible. Sometimes the crucible can naturally harden, especially when you use it with higher melting point metals or use fluxes, but you need to get to that point. It might crack before it happens. And it's especially true with taller crucibles. Shorter are more forgiving and for that reason I will not harden this crucible. But I will show you how to do it. But first let's make a few more crucibles using 3D printed molds. You can download these crucible molds from printables and they're free. These are old molds that I used to use. They work but they have a few issues. So for that reason I'll use new molds. The new molds come in different sizes and thicknesses so you can make different thickness crucibles as well. You can get these molds from my Patreon page, YouTube's member page or printable store. If you're not in position to support the channel and get these molds from those places, that's fine, you can use the old molds. It's the same thing but they're just not as good. Or alternatively you can make your own molds. I will show you how these are made and how they work and why I think they are much much better. Now I normally I print everything in PLA. Apart from this part right here, the lid, which is printed in soft filament. You can print it in PLA if you want and I will tell you what's the difference later in the video. So this is how you assemble it. You put this right here on top. This is the lid. Then you get an M5, I believe it is, screw or whatever is this one called with a hook. You can get just a normal bolt, but this one works better. And you attach it like so. Then this goes on top, or you could put it first. And then this right here. And then you 
use some binder clips to hold it all together. I only use two for demonstration purposes. And then you have this press tool. You can use it like so, but even better, you can attach this handle, which makes the pressing way more efficient. It's very comfortable and you can do a very good job in pressing that silicon carbide. This is the main difference and it's a big one. It's a big difference. And then when you finish the mold, you can change to this tool. There are two variations, one with holes and one without. One with holes lets more air through. Just like before, I measured some silicon carbide and added approximately 10% of sodium silicate. So we just fill it up step by step and use the tool to press it down as good as you can. These molds will get updated in the future, just like software. In other words, I'll keep adding different sizes and also patterns, which is something I'm working on. You could even say that I've been practicing crucible making since the age of 13. Then we'll swap the tools and finish the pressing. We'll freeze the mold for at least two hours, depending on your freezer. You can also freeze them overnight, but I would say don't do it unless you need it. So now we just unlock the inner mold and we pull it out. And then we'll pull out the lid. If you didn't print your lid with a flexible filament, then pulling out might not be easy. In that case, just leave it inside of the crucible and you'll get it out once the crucible has been baked in the oven. In that case, the lid might deform, but at least it's not a lot of material to waste. To harden the crucible, we'll wrap it in ceramic fiber sheet. We'll keep it together with some rubber bands and then we'll stick it in the microwave. You wanna microwave it until the crucible becomes glowing red or the hardening won't happen. Once cold, unwrap the crucible, but be careful, it can still be hot. I like to use a wire brush to scrape off the ceramic fiber, but please make sure to wear a respirator. Our crucible is ready to be used. Ceramic fiber is a nasty material and that's one of the reasons why sometimes I use crucibles that are not hardened. There are other reasons, we'll not go into that uh, in this video, but yeah, that's the main reason. I just can't be bothered to work with ceramic fiber. That means I need to get it out of the bag where I keep it and then you pull it out and then there's dust. The table is all dusty. You have to wear respirator gloves. Um, your skin can get itchy if it gets into your skin and when you finish working you will probably want to even wash your clothes. Because yeah, it's a nasty material. You might say, but Benny, all your metal melting chambers are made from ceramic fiber. It's true, but it's not the same because these chambers are covered with captain tapes, so you kind of lock all the dust inside and then obviously there's layers of um, kiln mush and once you actually start using it, it all kind of becomes hard. So there is no ceramic fiber dust, well at least not to those, not in those levels, you know. The only dust that I can get usually is maybe dust from, from the kiln wash. Let me show you another way how you can harden the 
crucible and it's actually my preferred method. You'll see why in a second. For this you'll need ceramic fiber kiln paper. It's basically something that you would use, for example, when you do glass fusing, you would put it under the glass. We're gonna cut this paper to size, more or less, and we'll wrap it around the crucible. We'll glue it to the crucible with some ordinary school, school glue or glue stick. It's still advisable to use gloves, wear gloves, but I actually run out of gloves. This is not as bad as the, as the proper ceramic fiber, so that's why I'm not wearing gloves, but yeah. We need to heat it up very good until the ceramic fiber pretty much disappears or fuses together with silicon carbide. If you don't heat it up enough, you will pretty much end up with the crucible that will look almost the same, just a little bit burned. You can't tell it on the camera, but that kiln paper, that ceramic fiber sheet is still there and it's pretty much intact, so I need to heat it up for longer. When I saw that it was all gone, I let the crucible cool down. And the next morning, this is how it looked. This method works best with smaller crucibles, because the bigger ones are more difficult to heat up to those glowing red temperatures. But at least you don't have to deal with that nasty ceramic fiber. This one is better and cheaper.